Hey everybody, Rob here. It's time for a couple of brand new pro revenge stories. First one, don't stick to our agreement. You shouldn't have been stepping out. Let's jump right in. Sleepy Smiling Kitty wants you to subscribe to the channel. He's just too tired to tell you himself, so I have to do it for him. You don't want to upset the Sleeping Smiley Kitty, right? Here we go, strap in for a long one kids. This is a story from long, long ago, in a galaxy far, far away. And by that, I mean it happened three years ago at a pizza place I used to work. I was a delivery driver for six years at various pizza places, picking up and moving on to greener pastures whenever it suited me. Granted, that only happened a couple times because I am unfortunately a very loyal employee. To be honest, I should have done that before this whole thing ever happened. The store I was at was part of a nationwide franchise, and the waters had gotten choppy. All of the managers quit at once, and they just couldn't seem to get one to stick around. It got so bad that the area manager had to come in as acting GM and brought a manager from another store with him. These two are the main characters of this story. Well, besides me, obviously. For the purpose of this story, we'll call them Jeff and Kate, and I'll just be me. Jeff was 45 and had been with the company for a long time before I started, worked himself up from the position of driver, all the way to being one to oversee about 20 stores. He was actually married to another area manager. I got along okay with Jeff for the most part. On the other hand, Kate and I got on like a house on fire, both being ladies of a similar age. She often confided things in me that would soon bite her in the ass figuratively. I considered myself a decent employee as far as pizza slingers go, came to work on time, did all of the dishes, got along with everyone, and had the best delivery times. Because of this, I usually landed all the best shifts, including opening on Saturdays. If you've never worked a tip job, you know that shift is the most coveted out there. Working through both the lunch and dinner rush before going home is well worth having to get up earlier. That information is relevant to the story, trust me. You see, there are always two drivers who do that shift. One comes in earlier and leaves earlier, and I was the one who got to come in just before we flipped on the open sign and went home once dinner rush began to die down. This is also relevant. The final vital bit of info you need for context is that my brother goes a bit wild at Christmas. His favorite thing to do is book an entire movie theater for everyone he knows to see a movie of his choice. This particular year when The Last Jedi came out, and he is a Star Wars fanatic, so that was what we were going to see. Unfortunately, it would be at 6 on a Saturday, at least 2 hours before I would get off. At this point, Jeff and Kate had been with us for three months without managing to find suitable replacements, and I made an arrangement with the other opening driver to switch shifts because his ended right when I would need to leave to make the movie. I then cleared it with Jeff and he agreed to let me go at 5.30. I was all set, or so I thought. You see, that Saturday we started busy, very busy. So busy that at 5.30 when I went to hand Jeff my slips, he had already dispatched me out on a double delivery. I took them but reminded him that I needed to leave when I got back. I just hoped the trailers were long enough that I didn't miss much of the beginning of the movie. I got back from my double and by that point it was already 6 and the theater was 20 minutes away. I had to leave. Once again, I went to hand my slips to Jeff but he got in my face. You leave when I say you can leave, he told me. You're not going to let me? I asked, incredulous that he was reneging on our deal. I came in early. I did all my time, damn it. He looked so very smug. No. Well, I made a decision right then and there. There are so many pizza jobs out there that they needed me more than I needed them. I took my slipbook, you know, the kind that you see in restaurants, I found they're great for delivery because not only can you store all of your slips in them, but they're hard enough for customers to bear down on to sign. Anyway, I slapped that in his hand and said, fine, then I quit. It was his turn to look incredulous. After making sure I meant it, he checked me out and I left the store fuming. I missed the entire opening of my movie. But the story doesn't end there. Oh no, 
You remember how I said Kate would confide in me? She loved to tell me all about how often she and Jeff would meet at a hotel after work. She even horrified me by telling me Jeff would turn off the cameras so they could have sex in the back office when the store was empty in a chair I had sat in multiple times. Kate was even so obliging to give insignificant details like the date and time this happened. So I put in an anonymous call to the franchise's HR and told them what to look for when it came to checking the tapes. I told them everything Kate had told me, but I still wasn't content with leaving it there. So I went to my local pizza place that just happened to be in Jeff's wife's area. Remember when I said she was also an area manager? And I got to gossiping with the workers there while they made my pizza. I was well aware it would make it back to her. Food employees can't keep such juicy gossip to themselves. Jeff got demoted to store manager, then transferred to the same store in his wife's area I went to so she could keep an eye on him. I guess it didn't work out because last I heard, Jeff's wife divorced him and he no longer worked for that franchise. And none of that would have happened if he had just let me leave on time. So OP got revenge on a crappy manager on a power trip and exposed them for the cheating bastard that they are. I sincerely hope OP has better managers now and doesn't have to deal with that kind of crap anymore. On to our next story. He punched me over a fender bender. I destroyed his life. Let's jump right in. I was working as a civilian with the US military overseas and I lived off base in an apartment complex popular among the US military. One morning, I accidentally hit another soldier's vehicle. Upon exiting the vehicle, I noticed that both our vehicles were what you would call a hoopty. A hoopty is an old car that's pretty beat up and that has been passed around from service to service member and they generally sell for $1,000 to $2,000. I also recognized that I was at fault for the accident. It was a very minor accident. His rear bumper was dented in slightly, but I could hear both our cars still running. I approached the driver who had already gotten out and he was in uniform and I apologized and said, if it was all right with him, I'd like to negotiate a payment that I will pay him in cash and we don't involve the authorities. I wanted to keep this simple. I'll be honest, the accident was so minor, I honestly expected him to say, nah man, it's good, but even if he wanted some money, I'd have paid him. I have always been of the opinion that if you have a fender bender and can negotiate agreeable terms between both the parties, it's best to not involve insurance and police. He told me he wanted to call the police. I said we could call the police or we could go on base together and I could give him $300. He said that wasn't enough. So I upped my offer to $500. He proceeded to punch me in the face. It was a sucker punch. He got into his car and took off and in the process nearly ran me over. Now I had a black box in my car which recorded everything. I went to the provost marshal office on base, the police station, and reported the accident and the assault and showed the MP the footage, which they used his license plate to track him down. I was also asked if I wanted to involve the local authorities and press criminal charges off base. Honestly, I felt like the soldier would learn his lesson if I let UMCJ, the military court basically, handle this and I said not at this time. I was told it was an option. The end result was the soldier in question got 60 days of extra duty, reduction in rank and forfeited a portion of his paycheck. Essentially, if he dealt with that, this would have been the end of the whole ordeal. Honestly, at this point, I assumed our little ordeal was over. Well, a few days after his punishment was decided on, which was not long after the incident itself, I was in the commissary grocery store on base shopping when the soldier who assaulted saw me and began to insult me. I told him he needed to calm down, that he should learn his lesson. He told me I was a pussy who didn't know how to take a punch. I reminded him that I held back on destroying his life. He told me he's already been punished and I can't touch him again. He left me be. A store employee witnessed the entire encounter and I got the employee detail and reported this interaction to his command. His commander told me he had been ordered to not interact with me and would take action. His commander also recommended I involve the local authorities since this soldier obviously isn't learning his lesson. 
So I did. I contacted an attorney. The attorney was unsure if we could successfully sue the soldier and said he would need a cash payment to take the case. Honestly, I was mad and wanted to teach this guy a lesson. I agreed it was not cheap. To keep this story short, we ended up in court off base. We presented our evidence. The soldier in question had decided to represent himself. Several times in the court, he had outbursts. The judge ended up granting me a judgment of approximately 50,000 US dollars. When the judgment was given, the soldier called the judge a son of a bitch and that the army would cover for him. So the judge changed his judgment to $80,000. And the judge then asked me if I also wanted to press charges against this soldier in criminal court. Honestly, it was obvious this guy wasn't going to learn a lesson. I told the judge I wanted to pursue criminal charges in addition to the judgment. My lawyer later advised me that if I ever wanted to see the money, I should pursue an international hold. With my judgment, it's likely that a judge would grant me an international hold. An international hold is basically where this soldier would not be allowed to leave the country until I was paid my $80,000. Also, he told me that according to the agreement between the US military and the host country, the US military would honor the international hold. Basically, the US military would not protect him or move him out of a country to avoid punishment. Honestly, by this point, I had paid my lawyer thousands of dollars and I honestly didn't feel like paying thousands of dollars and getting nothing for it. So I said yes, I wanted to go forward with the international hold. About a month later, the international hold was granted and the US military was informed of this. Two months after that, the criminal case was over and the soldier was sentenced to 90 days in jail. By this point, the soldier had been moved onto the base into his barracks by his commander. I remember the day I was informed the NPs handed him over to the local authorities to begin his 90-day jail sentence. Did I mention he still owed me $80,000? I heard nothing for a year. And then one day I get a call from his commander. His commander wants me to make a statement in regards to the case. I go in and make the statement. During the statement, I find out the US military was in the process of chaptering the soldier out of the US military. The commander also informed me that he was close to coming up with the money to pay me so he could have the international hold lifted. The commander also asked me if my lawyer would be willing to make a statement. I contacted my lawyer, who also made a statement about the facts of the case. A few weeks later, his ex-wife contacted me. When this all started, I knew he was married. Guess his wife decided to divorce him. She informed that her ex-husband had the money and needed the details on how to pay me. I provided her the details and a few days later I got the payment and contacted his ex-wife to inform her I had been paid. She then asked me to send a receipt so he could have the international hold lifted and return to the States. I asked her how he got the money. She said he maxed out his credit and also had family help out. Also, during this conversation, I had found out the army had chaptered him out of the military. I sent her the receipt and that's the last I ever heard from his side. I took his $80,000 and bought myself a brand new car and used the rest of the money to put down on an investment property. The funny thing about this whole story going right back to the beginning is that OP was willing to pay him $500 for this accident but the idiot just brought this all on himself afterwards. He deserved to lose that 80 grand. As mentioned in the comments, I guess some people are just very intent on blowing up their own lives. I'd like to thank both OPs for posting their stories to the Pro Revenge subreddit. You can visit them at the links in the description below. Please go there and give them an upvote. Once again, this is Rob from Karma Comment Chameleon saying thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and share it with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one.